Hello everybody, this is String and we're back to kick off round 6 for Group G. And we have got this fight card for you ladies and gentlemen, so check it out. So you can see our main event is a big clash at the top between Drogon Targaryen III and Futuristic. Victory for either of those two and we'll see them in the last 32 round. Of course, to be honest, I think we'll see both of them anyway. But yeah, that map you feel like is going to decide who finishes top, which could be key in this group. Anyway, before that, we have got Shy Guy going up against Pointless Windless Moon. I know, I'm sorry I have to bring it up. Defeat for Shy Guy will knock Shy Guy out of this tournament as well, so Shy Guy has to win that. Then we have Ultra Lord versus Lad. That's going to be an important match in this group. But at first, it is the Piva going up against Dino Tenga. Ooh, the Alpha Arena. Okay, in the red corner for the Piva, we got Starachosaurus. Well, defeat for Piva and. I don't think it'll officially end their hopes again at this group. Actually, yes, it will because of the Lad Ultra Lord matchup. In the blue corner for Dino Tenka, we got Simo Tyrannus. Victory for Tenka will get will secure a last 32 spot. A bonus point win and they can go top in this group. Well, temporarily. Until Futuristic and Rogan play. So a lot to play for you for both of our guys. Ooh, and it's Piva getting the first shot of the match. Defense boots activating, that, that could be important. Ooh, but it's Tenka responding straight away with a crit, a light recovery to come. That's a good hit from Tenka. Remember, this Samotrana does have heat eruption, so ties will favor it. Well, that will favour it as well, because that's another crit on the board. Um, I'm, I can't remember if Piva has an Alpha Dinosaur in their team. I think they do. Well, they got an Alpha Kralophosaurus. Unfortunately, that doesn't count as terrain advantage. <laughs> but that is a big shot from the Stratosaurus. Crit on the board. Massive hit. A recovery as well. Oh, that's helped. The defense boost maxed up. Good shot there from Piva. And that should put him in the lead. And it does. Right, coming in next for Tenka, we got Megalosaurus. Now, Megalosaurus, we all know it hits like a truck. I'd probably say it has the... I think it has the hardest hitting crit of all secret dinosaurs. Except for a Patasaurus lethal type. And maybe Kralophosaurus. <laughs> okay, so he's like third, but it still hits pretty hard. But you know what else hits pretty good? This Stratosaurus. Another hit on the board. This is good from Piva. A bonus point win would put them right in the mix. But still a long way to go yet. Anything can happen in this matchup. Another tie. Take the cut of done with them with the same with Tyrannus. Oh, and another hit! Megalosaurus just can't get a hit in this match. That's another tie. That's going to be it for Megalosaurus. And it is 2-0 to Piva. What a start. Right. We dare not count Tenker out yet. Because coming in third, it is Super Triceratops. Awaker mode on three. But what he needs to do is get rid of this Stratosaurus ASAPs. And now I remember PFAS team and he doesn't have an Alpha Dinosaur. <laughs> so at least terrain advantage is not a worry. But what is a worry is this Stratosaurus is constantly getting hits. Very good for PFAR but not good for Tenka. Okay, there's a crit. Tenka needed that crit. Right, the Awake the Mode's on free. Oh, but the Stratosaurus! No, it doesn't! That's a Dino Stuffer. That's going to put a stop to that crit. So no crit from Stratosaurus that time. But it does eat up the Awaken Mode bar as well. Can Stratosaurus survive? Oh, it does! It does more! It gets a hit! 
man, the Ceratosaurus is cleaning up. And actually, with the Awaken mode, if Tanker fails to get a hit here, we might see a 3 nil here. Oh, of course they failed to get the hit. Of course they do. Okay, here's a hit. That's a Thunder Driver. It will not be a 3-0 win, but I do feel the damage has been done already. And I'd be shocked if Pivar didn't win from here. Right, coming in next for Pivar, we've got Majungasaurus. Bow. Chi. Bow. Chi. Can this Majungasaurus finish off the job for Pivar? Or can Tanker spring an unlikely comeback? No Awaker mode. Mo no wait to recover. Health. No healing moves. No one hit away from defeat. They're, oh, they're on the brink. And yeah, there it is. Oh, actually, maybe not. The Jungasaurus is very balanced. And the Triceratops does survive. Okay, there it is. This is the bonus point win for Pivar. What a massive result for them. And that gets them in the top four. And that heaps all sorts of pressure on Lad and Ultra Lord. Right, on to our next match. Okie dokie, in the red corner for Ultra Lord, we have got an Alpha Guanadon. Both of these two level on points in this group. A win for either of them, and they'll stay in the top four going into that final round. Okie dokie, in the blue corner for the mad lad, we've got Incentrosaurus. Well, a bonus point win, and well, they wouldn't, lad wouldn't go first. I think they'd be second above, di yeah, above Dino. Drogon by virtue of the head to head. But yeah, at the minute, for these two, the victory is essential. Keep themselves in that top four. And well, Lad does get the first hit there, but the Dino Stuffer is going to put a stop to that crit. Okay, that's a tie. That seemed to favour the new Centrosaurus a bit more. Ooh, that's a crit this time though. No dino suffer to protect him. And it's Lad getting the first shot of the match. Defense boost coming in as well. It's another tie. Ultra Lord yet to get a hit in this match. Oh, here's a hit. It's a dino force. A big shot from Ultra Lord. I'm going to sneeze. Got it right. <laughs> yeah. And I held the sneeze in as well. Double victory. Oh, jeez. That's a big hit from Ultra Lord. So both of our guys have got a crit apiece. But Ultra Lord's definitely hits harder. Okay, is that going to be lethal? Indeed it is, and you Centrosaurus goes down. Hmm. This could be an issue for Lad. Coming in next for them, we've got Polar Campus. has got tight disadvantage against our Guanadon. Now that could be a wee bit of a problem here. Now the saving grace is the Iguanodon is on relatively lowish health, so you won't need too many hits to get to finish it off. Well, he don't want to get... Okay, he didn't want to get by that crit, but instead gets a crit of his own. It's a stomping hammer. Boosh. Big shot from Lad. Oh, almost killed it. Almost killed it. Okay, this stomping hammer will finish the job. Could have done with the stomping hammer in the last hit. <laughs> Would have had a hit of the Majungasaurus then. But no matter, Lad will take this, and we are level pack it. Mm -hmm. 
Right, coming in next for Ultra Lord, we have got Super Majungasaurus, Awake Mode on 3. The Awake Mode could be a big factor in this match. Can Ultra Lord use it well? Oh, that's another stomping hammer, three in a row from Lad. Stamping their authority on this match. Right, that's one. Not for, don't be rock again. It's a fucking rock again. This random number generator is not very random at the minute. It's Ultra Lord's fault. Stop going scissors. Oh, oh, jeez, you freaking killed it! Um, okay. Oh, hang on a minute. We do have a terrain advantage here. And it's Ultra Lord's terrain advantage because coming in food, we got Dynonicus. Actually, forgot about this guy. Okay, and it will get a crit as well, so that could definitely help Ultra Lord get back in this match. Those stomping hammers are causing a real issue. The saving grace for them is an Earth Barrier hasn't been activated, which I'm kind of surprised about. Right, this... Oh, there we go. At least it wasn't rock this time. <laughs> oh, that's another tie. Those stomping hammers have really done some damage to Ultra Lord. And this hit will too. The polar canvas really looking strong. Ah, here's an earth barrier. That's gonna help as well. Ultra Lord has just lost all momentum. Okay, here comes a light recovery. A hit which is gonna get rid of the earth barrier. Ultra Lord getting back into it. Chipping away at this polar canvas and lads lead. Ooh, but Lad gets another hit. This time an Onion Gear dive. An Earth Barrier here. Oh, look at that. Massive hit from Lad. No Earth Barrier, though. Can they get another hit, which will get them a bonus point win, which would be huge at this stage of the tournament? Yes, they can. And how ironic that is it, it is a stomping hammer that does it for them. Boosh. Oh, look at the Dynolicus trying to get back up. Not happening. And down it goes. And it is Lad's victory. It's a bonus point win. And that is a massive result for Lad. Right when they needed it the most. Wow, we've had some uh, stomping so far, haven't we? Let's hope this next matchup isn't another stomp. Okie dokie. In the red corner for Shy Guy, we've got the Blitz type Patty Cephalosaurus. Ooh, and this is a good field for Moon because they will get terrain advantage with the Kark. Is this going to be the day for Moon? Well, if you're Shy Guy, you hope it's not because defeat here will knock him out of the tournament at the group stage. In the blue corner representing Moon, we have got Super Mimus. And well, <laughs> it's not been a... It's been a very difficult tournament for Moon. No points, no wins. They're the only combatant in this entire tournament yet to win. They're the only combatant yet to get a point. It's been a really, really rotten tournament for them. Right, because this Patty Cephalosaurus is blitz type, you know the deal. It's going to go for two crits. And of course it gets the first one. <laughs> right, crit number two. Okay, he didn't get that one. I mean, it's a tie. Alright, at least Moon didn't get double critted there. And do get a hit on the board. It's a power drain. In fairness to Moon, they have come closer in their recent matches. You know, they, the other guys haven't got bonus point wins. So I'll give them props for that. And, well, everything said and done. We're level packet. Okay, there's a hit from Pachycephalosaurus. Oh, he's going to give the Super Minus a taste of his own power drain. Seckies. Oh, 
was a laser ray. That's going to put Shy Guy in the lead. Boosh. And Super Mimus tasting the rainbow. Right, coming in next for Moon, we've got Ankylosaurus. Oh, this is this starting to feel like that sinking, unfamiliar feeling? We'll see. Because this Ankylosaurus does hit pretty hard. And it's got the Earth Barrier. It just needs to get some hits. Okay, that's a tie. Another tie. Triggers the Quake Saber though. And there is a Quake Saber. Moon getting a good shot here. Now, the secret move of the Pachycephalosaurus is triggered, so type advantage will apply. Ah, oh, and it's still not enough to kill it. Okay, an Earth Barrier though, that's definitely good. A good shot there from Moon. Oh, okay, there goes the Earth Barrier. Pachycephalosaurus getting off another power drain. That Earth Barrier could have been crucial here. Okay, so yeah, Earth Barrier is in effect. That could have been a crucial Earth Barrier. Could have stopped the Blitz crap, but unfortunately, it had to be used up on the Power Drain. Oh no, not again. <laughs> Another Power Drain, more button spamming. And the Packy Zephylosaurus. Oh, look at that all of a sudden. Okay, it's a tie. Okay, it's a tie. Yeah, okay, yeah. Moon will get a free hit here. Right, coming in third for Moon, we've got Carcharodontosaurus. Now, because the Pachyrhinosaurus should have died in that tie, I will give Moon a free hit here. And then he'll get his terrain hit because this thing has terrain advantage. And then we'll do the two blitz crits that the Sorolophus will go for. Right, so we at least he took out the Pachycephalosaurus. Ah, shoot in a bucket. Bucket, I forgot. I forgot about the attack boost. Right, coming in second four, Shy Guy, we got a Sorolophus. It's a blitz type Sorolophus, so you know the you know the deal. <laughs> now it will go for the two crits after the Cachyrodontosaurus gets his terrain hit, and the Cachyrodontosaurus will get a crit of his own actually. So that could be just what Moon needs to claw their way back in this contest. And the attack boost will activate. Fire cannon. This is this could be a big shot from Moon. And he'll have a good chance to land another crit with the on this Sorolophus because it has to go for the two crits. Then the rules. Right, crit number one. That's a tie. Crit number two. Oh, that's another fire cannon! And all of a sudden, things look things looking up for Moon here. Getting right back in this match, dispatching Sorolophus relatively quick. Now again, the same thing is gonna happen here because this Edmontonia has a scissors crit. So Moon could get two more fire cannons off here and win this match. Right, coming in third for Shy Guy. We've got Edmontonia, it's blitz type. You know the deal, it's going for two crits. That Carcharodontosaurus is maxed up in attack boost as well. If they can get off two fire cannons, they could win this match. This could be disaster for Shy Guy. Oh, okay, he gets a crit there. That's one crit. That's the losing bonus point secured. Crit number two. Oh, two crits! Oh, look at that! Okay, he's an Earth Barrier, so at least the cart lives to fight another day. Oh, it's gonna happen for, again for Moon, isn't it? Okay, there's a hit that eats up the Earth Barrier. Come on, Moon! Come on, you can do this! <laughs> Come on, we can't have him go pointless this whole tournament. Bless his little soul. Oh no! 
<laughs> All right, well, it's a, it's a win for Shy Guy, and they needed to win, but oh, moon, moon, moon. Their search for their first points this tournament goes on. But it is a huge win for Shy Guy, but it could have been a bonus point win. They might regret not getting the bonus point going forward. Now then, on to our main event of this session, and it should be a belter. Okie dokie, in the red corner for Drogon, we have got Gygus. Okay, we've got no terrain advantages here in this match, so we don't need to worry about that. A regular Gygus. Drogon been a really impressive team in this tournament, particularly the Eoraptor, which I thought was a big gamble, but it's a gamble that's paid off so far. But in the blue corner for Futuristic, we got Super Baryonyx. Well, Futuristic is accustomed to a fast start in their matches, and I wouldn't be surprised if they get off to a quick start here. Because this thing does have type advantage, it's got an awakened hit. Well, a chance of an awakened hit. <laughs> Although, Futuristic hasn't missed a single awakened hit this entire tournament. So, they'll probably get it if they do get that far. We'll see what happens. Ooh, but it's Geiger's getting the first shot of the match. Poison in the Baryonyx as well. Oh, but there's a crit from Baryonyx. That type of vantage is really going to help, as will this Aqua Javelin. That like I said, Futuristic does like a quick start. And look at that! Might not even need to use the Awaken Mode on Geiger's. And there's a Hydro Cutter, and that could be big for Futuristic, because that will put him in the lead, and it'll give him a chance and an awakened hit on the Eoraptor. And if he takes that out, this could be 2-0 Futuristic in no time. Right, coming in next for Drogon, we've got an Eoraptor. Let's see what it transforms into this time. Ooh, it's a Mega Raptor. Interesting. That does mean it's going to have the Sonic Blast, so ties are going to heavily favour Eoraptor here. And this thing has been really effective for Drogon. It's not been the hardest hit in Dino, I will say that, but... In terms of effectiveness, it has, it has definitely done the job. But... Futuristic does have the chance of an awakened hit on it. Oh, and it gets a crit, and it's time for the Awaken hit. Okay, that wasn't too much damage. This could be big in this match. And Futuristic gets it, and it's not even a Hydro Cutter, which one-shots the Eoraptor. Wow, that was literally a perfect hit for Futuristic there. Any other hit probably wouldn't have killed the Eoraptor because of the type of vantage. But look at this. Right, coming in third for Drogon, we got Spinosaurus, and well, this Spino's going to have to perform now, because Futuristic is well on top. And they get the Awakened hit yet again. Ooh, but Spino gets a crit, a crucial crit that downs the Baryonyx. Drogon not going down yet. Remember, Drogon has got a bonus point in all of their matches so far. Whether that's a bonus point win or a losing bonus point, so this match is far from done. Right, up next for Futuristic, we've got Cychania. Super Cychania. And ironically, for Drogon to keep that record going, they're going to have to lose this match and get a losing bonus point. <laughs> Again, Awaken Mode on 3. This Cychania has been the real finisher for Futuristic in this tournament. Now, this Spino is heroic type, so that crit is going to hit really hard. It's high. It's another tie. No sand traps or ocean panics. Ooh, but that's a crit. And like I said, that crit's going to hit super hard, even without the Hydro Cutter. Tech boot activate then. Right, that's one. Ooh, but Futuristic responds with a crit of their own. Defense boost coming in. Ooh. 
now. Okay, that's, that was twice. So we... Oh, we won't get to see the Awakened mode because of the Hydro Cutter. The Hydro Cutter is going to take... Aqua Javelin is going to take out that Cytania and deny Futuristic a chance of an Awakened hit for the bonus point win. How big could that Aqua Javelin be? Right, coming in third for Futuristic, we've got Ace Dino Tactor, which we've hardly seen in this tournament. I mean, it's been all the Baryonics, to be honest. <laughs> But they're going to need it, yeah. Although I suspect one hit from an ace will finish off Spino. But Drogon, not going down without a fight. Oh, that's a crit! With the tech boost maxed up, we could see Aqua Javelin as well. This is a massive Hydro Cutter. And that guarantees a losing bonus point as well. So, yet again, Drogon's going to get something out of their matches. Massive hit from Drogon. Oh, but Futuristic gets the next hit. That could be crucial. Stifle that momentum. Not much damage done, though. Both our guys going to get losing bonus points at the very least out of this. But it's... it's yeah, that's it. That's going to do it. This hit's going to down the Spinosaurus. It's going to be Futuristic's victory. A victory that will all but secure top spot in this group. In fact, I think it does. So Futuristic will win Group G. And Drogon will yet again get a losing bonus point. <laughs> wow. Right, we'll have a look at the table and we can end the session. Well, that's Group G, ladies and gentlemen. Futuristic guaranteeing top spot there, 19 points, nigh uncatchable. Then we have Drogon in second place on 14, on 14 points with six freaking points. That is nuts. Then we have Lad in third place. Getting that big bonus point win, 13 points. Then the Piva sneaking into fourth, knocking Dino Tenka into fifth all of a sudden. The bonus points and the head-to-head -head are the reason why Piva is in fourth. Then we have Ultra Lord above Shy Guy again, but the head-to-head -head Shy Guy in seven, but still well in the fight. Right, let's have a look at round seven in this group. So interesting, Piva will go up against Drogon in the final round. Victory for Piva would put them second by the head-to-head -head and would put them through. Then we have Lad versus Shy Guy. That's a big match. That's a well, this would have been an even more significant match for, for these two, but that bonus point win has given the lad a good cushion here, and it forces Shy Guy to get a bonus point win in that matchup to go above lad. And then Futuristic taking on Ultra Lord, that's going to be tough for Ultra Lord, that. Have Tenka going up against Moon, probably the, more the most favourable matchup in this round for Tenka. But yeah, hope you enjoyed, and until next time, ta-ta!